shout out to our sponsors at IconBet. Open source, decentralized gaming, no deposits, play straight from your wallet. IconBet, made by the players, for the players. Ion Icon is proudly supported by Icon Nation and the Icon community. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ion Icon. Today's episode is special. We have Daniel with us from Project Nebula. Daniel is the Everyone knows him if you've been hanging out in the Discord or Telegram. He is the community manager. He is the content creator, website builder. I'm sure he does a whole bunch of other stuff that he never tells anyone at Project Nebula. But he is with us today. Daniel, how are you? Hey, really good, Fez. It's uh, awesome to be here again. And I think we're, uh, we're all pretty excited about having this air. And especially right before launch, which is coming up soon. Oh, we are so close. I actually saved this as a final question, but... How close are we? I think it's just now days away, isn't it? Five days, yeah. Uh, it'll be the 27th of July next week. Nice. What, what is it What is it in the gaming industry um, when it's gone gold, right? When it's gone gold, it's ready to ship. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so the game well, is gold or how are we looking? <laughs> well... You know, I think we think the game's been gold for a while, but you no, know, it's uh, <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely going to be uh, golden uh, next week. We're we're pretty pumped, and I think uh, the general sentiment is uh, confident uh, around uh, our little office there. So, Love yeah, it. gold great, for sure. Great place to be just before launch. Usually, everyone's scrambling. Doesn't sound like it, which is good. No. <laughs> uh, so, look, Daniel. Before we jump right in, look. Let's um. Let's assume someone's just jumped in, joined the Icon ecosystem, started listening to Iron Icon, because obviously that's the first thing you do. And then uh, you discover Project Nebula and you know nothing else about it. What would you tell that person? How would you describe what is it a game? What kind of game is it? And why is it so cool? Well, if you are someone that gets uh, excited uh, about moving around, uh, exploring exploring new areas of a, uh, of a universe, uh, uncovering new pieces, kind of going through puzzles, uh, and getting to, uh, you know, expand uh, your empire, uh, so to speak, then that would be the idea of Project Nebula, at least in the beginning here, before we get into PvP and stuff. It's a forex genre, uh, strategic uh, game of space exploration, and we're... Uh, you know, we're all from uh, kind of different uh, different areas when it comes to gaming, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of tidbits from from recognizable games that have been introduced into Project Nebula. Everything from uh, I would say Age of Empires style exploration to uh, D and D based like campaigning when it comes to storylines and things. So, you know, there's a lot for everybody uh, in Project Nebula for sure. Okay, great. And and would it be correct in saying this is kind of a fusion between a, a blockchain game? It integrates blockchain and creates NFTs, but um, also every transaction or everything you do doesn't require transaction on the blockchain to play the game. Would that be fair? That's super fair to say. Uh, it's simple. And I think that even with the most basic understanding of blockchain or crypto uh someone who is able to set up a wallet pretty quickly uh is able to come in and enjoy a game where you don't have to make them yeah you don't have to make hundreds of transactions uh you're not you're not seeing all this uh all this in the back end and uh you're basically just interacting with the marketplace and building up a cool collection of everything from high definition art to you know uh planets and playable playable nfts that uh really change your gameplay yeah okay so to really summarize this if if we're making comparisons things like axie infinity um gods unchained you know we know these to be probably uh, some of the biggest blockchain play to earn games you play these games you can upgrade whatever the games is these games are about axie infinity is you know breeding these crazy little critters that can fight like Pokemon style and people are selling them for insane amounts of money and it is one of the most popular play to earn games I believe there were some articles floating around recently so it, it is in the same light as these games isn't it Project Nebula essentially it captures that and recreates in a very different theme and adds so many more components to it yes uh, the play to earn 
side of Project Nebula is something that we hold near and dear to our hearts. We want to give players as much value as possible. So when they come in and, you know, give us a bit of money, we want to be able to see them turn that uh, investment, so to speak, uh, into more. And currently, uh, even before launch, that's exactly what's happened for pretty much anyone that's come into the game. Uh, players already, just with the most basic uh, fundamentals in the game, have been able to get as much as 10 times their uh, 10 times their value back from some of these NFTs. And there's a lot of uh, community excitement around the collectability side of the game, and that's driven, uh, driven value, so that's really good. Now, when we launch, the play-to-earn side expands quite a bit. I think we'll get into it uh, a little bit later, but there are some ways to uh, earn uh, just by discovering things in the universe. That's pretty cool. And the uh, I think the price tag on earning there is extraordinarily great uh, for, for players. Uh, players can upgrade planets. Uh, you can't breed planets. I'm not sure how that would work, but that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but players can upgrade planets and uh, and 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 change their change their NFTs a, a little bit to to make them more powerful. Uh, spaceships and such can be can be crafted and 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 changed in the future, uh, upgraded, and we're introducing uh, crafting. So there's going to be uh, tons and tons of materials based on your planet types. Some things you can make on plant some planets. Some things you can't. Uh, and you'll be able to produce um, goods, uh, basically, and we'll have this, uh, you know, supply and demand product market completely based off NFTs, where players can come and uh, and make stuff, uh, everything from spaceship modules to, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, things you'd use in, things you'd uh, use in your exploration to, uh, you know, boost your boost your speed or. Uh, how quickly you're able to perform upgrades. Uh, so, players will have a lot, uh, a lot of things to put value on, uh, and a lot of ways, even from the uh, lowest end of the financial scale, there uh, a lot of ways to make money uh, when they're when they are spending time in Project Nebula. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, as soon as you started, when you you hinted, you in, kicked it off with the word crafting, and I was going to literally nitpick if you didn't expand on that. Um, so that's exciting. Okay, so you can craft various um, materials and things, and you can actually there'll be a marketplace to sell those components as well. Yes, and we, uh, just to keep in mind, this is the next stage in our roadmap. Oh. So if you do visit our road, if you do visit our website, you can uh, see our roadmap there. Uh, it'll take you from launch, uh, and then crafting will come uh, at our next stage of development. Shouldn't be too far away, mm. uh, and PVE and PVP. Uh, are coming up after that but uh, in the beginning there are some play to earn uh sides and we definitely will deliver on the crafting thing uh soon our community's extraordinarily excited about that and i think that's been one of the hottest requests uh from some of our core core players so far yep Okay, so bringing it back then, we've gotten a good summary. We know this game is a space exploration game. Uh, you get it is unique because it is uh, the planets and things. Uh, there's various NFTs in there. So you get your spaceship, which is an NFT upgradable. You start exploring the galaxy. You discover planets. You can claim them. You can um, start upgrading the planets to uh, learn new technologies to gather minerals resources that you need to keep acquiring more wealth um what else what else have i missed in all of this um you haven't missed so much uh i think that's uh i think that's a good start uh mm -hmm. when somebody comes in on the 27th or you know shortly thereafter uh we're going to give you the Bare bones is not the best way to put it, but the first stage of development here is going to be the uh, is going to be the core essentials of the game: yep. uh, explorations, upgrade, and research. And uh, that's uh, what you'll be able to do. And as you start to you know complete these uh, trees and get uh, get a little bit further, you're we're we're going to be in the background making sure that the uh, the next thing for you to do uh, is is being built and uh, ready to go. So. Uh, yeah. So we're yeah. Sorry. Go no, ahead. No. So uh, and and I want to I want to keep um, digging into the play to earn because I think that that is the killer feature as well. But one final thing I feel we need to close off. So you mentioned there's Gen Zero, Gen One. Just for context, Gen Zero. What was that? 
So Gen Zero uh, was our pre-sale uh, list of planets and kind of the way that we wanted to get our core fan base to uh, be able to start playing the game. Um, technically, no one will... Well, I guess that's not true. We're giving away some Gen 1 planets now, but uh, for the most part, no one will uh, start the game with anything but a Gen 0 spaceship or a Gen 0 planet. So this was our... This was our revenue uh, stream yeah. uh, when we were starting development. Uh, we began a pre-sale in October. Uh, and as we talked about in our last interview, I mean, that pre-sale was phenomenal for us. Uh, we saw some really great statistics come out of it. People bought up planets very quickly. Uh, and we welcomed, uh, we welcomed, you know, a couple hundred uh, awesome, awesome people into the game. Mm. So that was Gen Zero. And from a NFT perspective, Gen Zero should be the rarest uh, uh you know lowest number highest value uh generation uh in this game uh, unless something you know weird happens with some future generation uh the <laughs> gen zero planets will be the og center of the universe uh so to speak and they will always have kind of a special special place uh, from a playing perspective they are not advantageous uh, Gen 1 players, Gen 2 players uh, in the future, and so on. They're not going to have a disadvantage from their uh, from their NFTs. Uh, but the collectability side is definitely where the Gen 0 uh, NFTs get their uh, shtick, so to speak. Yeah. And, okay, yep. So that that's how Gen 0. Now, Gen 1... What is different about Gen 1? Because Gen <coughs> 0, it was all everyone bought. There was the way it worked anyway. We won't need to deep dive there. People acquired. They've been holding their planets. Um, yes. Gen, zero, uh, Gen 1, though, uh, we can't just go into the marketplace and look for Gen 1 planets, can we? Absolutely not. No, there's no pre-sale for Gen 1. There's no, uh, there's no direct sale. Uh, you know, we are giving away a couple Gen 1 planets uh, here uh, and some exciting thing to talk about for your podcast here a little bit later. Uh so some people will have a Gen One planet uh, when the game launches, uh, but this is uh, just a just a handful. The idea of Gen One is to play our game. You will be able to start with a spaceship and go explore. And when you explore, you're going to encounter solar systems. You're going to encounter, uh, you know, some rogue planets and things like that. And you'll be able to claim them. So Gen One is the first listing of planets where uh, the only way to uh, obtain one or claim one is to find it, and that's pretty exciting. That's uh, that's where gameplay starts to starts to really come in. Oh, look, I'm already feeling excited about it, and that's what I, I loved how you you called it out. That is exactly the difference, isn't it? The Gen One planets, anything Gen One is claimable in game as you play. So, uh, is it though? Now, when you find a planet, will you have to? use ICX to acquire it, or is there a bit of a hybrid system going on on how you can um, claim these planets? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, claiming comes in two ways. Uh, you will either be able to uh, claim with in-game credits or claim with ICX. And there are some stats on when uh, either one of those options is possible. For legendary and mythic planets, uh, which I think in total is about 167 off the top of my head. Uh, these are these are purely going to be uh, through ICX. But for common uh, through rare, so common, uncommon, and rare planets, there's a one-third chance in the game that you will be able to claim them for credits over ICX. And credits are something that you're able to generate uh, through your planets in the in the game. Uh, you're able to discover them through exploration in the galaxy, and you are able to alter how your credits are generated and uh, what you get from exploration through your uh, upgrades and your research tree. So, uh, credits are a yeah, just an in-game in-game value, and uh, that gives some that gives some good balance, I think, for players in the game as well. Uh, not every planet you. You, you won't be able to claim a planet that's uh, credit claimable with ICX. So you'll have to have mm. some gameplay involved. You'll have to be able to generate some, some credits somehow. You'll have to play in order to claim those planets. And that gives some good balance between 
just having money in your uh, pocket and playing a game and being able to do everything and actually being able to play the game and uh, have some value come back from it. So I think it's uh, quite cool. Yeah, no, love that. I love that there's a split and options there. So uh, let, let's focus on um, discovering a planet that you have to uh, spend your ICX on. So uh, with you mentioned legendary. So w- I'm assuming uncommons. These are all the different classes. There's uncommons, rare, legendary. Um, what else? Have I, have I missed one? Uh, mythic, mythic on the high end of the scale and common on the low end. And just to, just to note real quick, in our pre-sale and through Gen Zero, we had zero common planets uh we wanted mm-hmm. to kind of give the a good range of value uh but we we didn't introduce common planets in gen zero so there is a difference there in gen one uh we will have common planets i think there's over 1700 of them uh in the universe uh from an icx perspective uh they will be rather rather affordable uh really uh and from a credit uh claiming perspective affordable as well so uh, these are really awesome to have, and really, uh, like, really good to really good to claim when you come across because you'll be able to bump your uh, resource generation and yeah. uh, do more in the game. Yeah, yeah. So, because every planet comes with unique um, rewards, right? Some some with more credits, some with more research points, etc. So, if you're wondering, well, why would I keep buying planets? Well, that's why, because the more you acquire, the quicker your stats regenerate, the more you can explore the galaxy, and that's the whole point of these games, isn't it? Uh, so, <laughs> Every planet is special, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, in the instance where you do discover uncommons and rares, or commons for, for that matter, and you have to buy, use ICX to purchase it, is there... How does that work? You can purchase it and you own it outright, and then you can put it up for auction if you don't want to hold the planet to earn some ICX in the marketplace. What, what's the process around that? Can you talk us through it? Sure. So we're kind of touching on two things here. How do I claim a planet? And then you are bringing up, uh, I think, for a lot of people, one of the most exciting things, and for uh, even just you know the most common and uh, you know, checks in once a week player, uh, something that's super exciting for them. Uh, so claiming a planet, tackle that first. You come across one. Uh, if you can afford it, it's yours. Uh, and this sh- this should be uh, good for most people. Uh, when, you, when you're talking about commons, uncommons, rares, uh, you're, you're, you, you should be able to, uh, to come across these and, and, and grab them. The, the claiming is done instantly. Uh, when you say claim for ICX or claim for credits, uh, you'll see the value there. And when you click that button, you uh, connect your wallet uh, and you make a transaction. Thanks to Icon, little shout out to ICX here. The transaction costs you like a thousandth of a cent and it's done instantly. So uh, it's yours. Uh, and this cost of credits or this cost of ICX uh, can go down based on uh, your skill tree in the game. So the more you've upgraded, the more you've researched, uh, you can really drive that. Uh, you can drive that cost down quite a bit, which is cool, um, and it's yours. But from the play uh, play to earn perspective here, we have introduced something called discovery rights. When you come across a legendary or mythic, uh, you have two reasons to to celebrate on that aspect here, and we really should thank our community for giving us some good feedback on this. Uh, we. We went in a direction that we didn't originally plan on this uh, this feature, thanks to our thanks to our player base, uh, who were very responsive to us when we were starting to introduce this. So, coming across a legendary or mythic now, you can claim it uh, for ICX, or uh, you can send it to auction. Uh, and the button there will say "Claim Discover Discovery Rights." You're going to get 25% of the final sale of that auction uh, in ICX. Uh, sent directly to you. And, okay. uh, oh wait, wait. Sorry. Can I? Can I just confirm? So what you're saying is, even if you find the legendaries, uh, those those classes, you don't need to. You, if you choose, if you don't have, say, whatever, it's worth five thousand ICX. I'm not saying this, not claiming this. I don't know. Um, but it's five thousand ICX. If you choose not to buy it, you can still then just send it because you've discovered it. Send it to the auc- to be auction to salt. Yes, yeah. You're going to look at a three-day auction for legendaries, and if you come across one of the two mythics in Gen 1, then it'll go to a seven-day auction. 
uh, which I think you can guess gives us some time to uh, to market that awesome find yeah. a, a little bit, get people excited about it, right? But uh, yes, you can just send it to auction, claim claim yourself as the discoverer mm -hmm. of this uh, pretty rare occurrence, and uh, you're going to get 25% of the sale price back. I guess if you're a gambler and you technically want to claim the planet, but you still send it to auction, you would even get 25% of the uh, final price back if you did win that auction too. So you kind of have a... Ah, okay. So if yeah. so you have the option to purchase it and yours and you don't have to send it to auction um, and you just own it or you yes. can purchase it and still send it to the auction <clears throat> and you still get, um, I guess, the 25% and because it's yours um the sale price is that no oh, that doesn't add up what? uh sorry i got a little confused on that one first no my bad you would you would get the total sale price if you own it when you sell it you get the total uh sale price right yes sorry yeah uh hang on i have to think you're you're sorry you're saying that if you bought the planet uh if you bought the planet, when you end up selling it, like six months in the future, you would get one hundred percent of the sale, right? Yes. It, yeah, that's always the case. I mean, if you, we, sorry, apart we can go the, back to doing the yeah. Yeah, apart from the two point five, uh, apart from the store fees, the marketplace fees, the rest of it is the players. Yeah, correct. Uh, I I was just saying here that if you uh, send it to auction and end up bidding on it, uh, if you do this discovery rights thing when you when you find a legendary ah, or mythic, yep. if you if you do end up bidding on it in the auction, which you're more than welcome to do, uh, you're still getting the twenty five percent of the final sale back to you. So it's almost like a uh, ah, yes, like a yes. rebate, yeah, yep, in a yep. way. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, and that this is only the case for the top tier planets it won't be the case for the rares and uncommons and commons if you discover where you have to if you discover it like and you have to use icx to purchase um you don't have the option to send it straight to auction you have to either buy it or let it be that's correct yeah, yeah. let it be uh and um the the legendary and mythics i think you well statistically you have a 3.4 percent chance of finding a legendary and a <laughs> 0 0.04 chance of finding one of the two mythics in gen one so the mythic definitely is a uh boy that's going to be exciting i i can't wait for someone to discover it uh i i, <laughs> I hope i hope by chance that uh it takes a little bit uh for someone to come across one but from the legendary i think uh you know quite often we'll see somebody coming across a legendary planet probably announcing it in our discord or telegram shout out to our social channels join them uh and uh yeah Getting a getting a good chance to make some money uh, there, or claim uh, an amazing uh, NFT for themselves. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, I will, I will find it quite amazing. Ten minutes into launch, someone goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, we we, uh, we might need a break from the uh, idea of uh, marketing something there. We we, we got to get our heads together after this launch. So, yeah, if you come across a mythic planet, you know, within a couple of days after launch. Uh, Remember where it is. Give us some time. Come back to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding with you. Uh, no, that's great. Okay, is there any other while we're talking play to earn? Because that that's that's pretty cool. So um, I love the the fact that we know these planets, the top tier planets, already are fetching a handsome. You know, <laughs> they're going for super. It. Yeah, they're crazy. So it, it's good to know that if someone who isn't a whale or just has a decent stash of icx finds some of these planets the top tier planets they can just opt to put it into the auction house for whatever it goes for and reap the rewards just for discovering it that's brilliant i love i love how you have done that and and thank you for Definitely. listening to the community that's great yeah uh, we have a great community so uh when they were giving us some feedback on this uh it it was it was solid feedback uh, and this was a really i think this was a really good uh thing for us this week uh how we how we changed this uh dual option uh you know for this discovery thing and uh it's going to be good uh there's there's good balance in the game we we always we always strive for balance in the game uh whether you're coming in with you know 20 bucks or you have uh tens of thousands as some you know nft nft collectors and, and players do uh, we want you to be able to play, enjoy, and find uh, find value uh, in whatever you're doing here. So, yeah, cool. So uh, now, part of this play turn, and and correct me if I've got this wrong, 
or just enlighten me, I should say, not correct me, enlighten me. Um, the the planets and stuff come with loot boxes and unique arts and, and music and, and things like that. Uh, is there a component to this where when you have a set or anything, you can sell these individually? H- How does that fit into the picture? Cool question. Um, I think... It, yeah. I think we can talk about craft a little bit here, if that's okay. Yeah. Is that is that fine? All right. So we have a uh, we have had the marketplace open since I believe it was January fifth when our presale ended. Uh, on the same day, the marketplace opened. Uh, people listed stuff. It went for sale. Now, when you had a Gen Zero uh, a rare planet or higher, uh, then you might have artwork, some lore. Uh, or soundtracks uh, that came with that uh, planet, pieces of panoramas, uh, anything like this. So these are all currently tied in together directly with the uh, NFTs. From the planet perspective, that will probably always be the case, that the art that the planet comes with uh, remains with that planet, because you're talking about an NFT, so yep. that va- that value is given uh, to what's coming with that uh, sale. Yep. So when you know when that planet has a piece of art and a soundtrack to it, that's that's the NFT. So that will probably remain. But uh, we are introducing uh, standalone NFTs that are not planets uh, or spaceships, for that matter. Uh, art. There's going to be there's some hints in our latest Medium article uh, and a quick shout out to our I think pretty fun Medium page there too. Uh, good info there uh, that you will be able to discover things in Gen 1 here at launch uh, in the universe as you're traveling around. Uh, And there's some hints to uh, the three main assets that we have there, uh, storylines, lore, uh, audio, and uh, art. So there's going to be tradable one-off pieces that, uh, that are done that way. And just to harp on craft, we're really excited about anything awesome being built on Icon. Uh, and we're definitely excited about Craft launching their uh, NFT marketplace. Uh, it, as it stands, uh, the NFTs sold on Craft should be able to be seen uh, and used and traded both in our game and on Craft. I'm referring purely to Project Nebula NFTs, of course, here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're even going to release a limited, uh, limited series of Gen One uh, collectibles on Craft uh, when they when they do launch. So uh, this is pretty cool. There's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of expanding to how NFTs are handled in our game uh, as we continue to progress, and we'll do definitely a, a lot more with things that aren't so playable, uh, like music, for instance, and things like that that players would want to would want to sell. Uh, for instance, if you were around during our beta phase, you might have participated in the Second Wind, uh, like choose your own adventure community series that we did. Uh, this w- this should be a standalone NFT that we that we gift t- to everyone that participated in that uh, during the beta. Uh, this is something that would be able to be sold uh, if you wanted to, and yeah. It'll be pretty cool, I think, as we uh, continue to progress with that. But in the beginning, sorry for the long-winded answer here. In the beginning, uh, most of this stuff is lumped uh, onto the existing NFT that it's tied to. So when you talk about the collectability side, uh, it is part of a planet or part of a ship. Mm, okay, that's cool. No, that that's good to know. That was one of something I, I was curious about. But that's interesting, isn't it? Because sometimes you, your collections are sometimes there's series there's a few series like one of five or um, there's sets out there. So sometimes you'll have to go chasing particular planets to acquire sets. Have I got that right? Or That's correct. Yeah, we uh, when we launch, we're going to have I'm not going to say too much about it because I want you to find out when you play. Oh, but yes. we're going to have a little bit of a mini game when you uh, are traveling through uh, the world here or the galaxy. Uh, and yeah, sets. Uh, if you do check up on our last Medium post uh, about the introduction of Gen 1 NFTs, you can see the specific numbers. Uh, nice. This this generation will have nine panoramas. Uh, those vary in how large the panoramas are. In Gen 0, they were all five-piece panoramas. That's not going to be the case in this one. Some mm-hmm. smaller, some bigger. Uh, we have an ultra, uh, ultra rare, hard to find, uh, version of an existing panorama that will be introduced and then there's going to be quite a few one-off 
pieces, and these all have varying uh, rarities. So you'll be able to see the copy count, one of 10, one of one, uh, yeah. one, of, one of 50. Uh, so you'll be able to see just how, just how unique uh, your, uh, your piece is and uh, drive some, definitely drive some value behind it. And I just have to say from a personal perspective, the art that we get for this game, the, the storylines that we have written by uh, our good friend Tavi here, and the music that we have produced for the game, so much time and effort and energy goes into these. Uh, and they're beautiful, they're awesome, they're fun, uh, and I think uh, captivating, definitely. So you should definitely spend some time, check out the art, and uh, I think anything you find uh, is you know, is going to be cool. Uh, definitely cool for you mm. when you play. So, so Daniel, and, and to close off with the craft, you did mention it's essentially, so what you're saying is my Gen Zero planet that I've been holding on to as my treasure and pride and joy, I can go and list it on the craft store when it's available, just, just to throw something different in there uh, in case it got a different set of eyes. Is that, is that what you're telling me? Giving about a one percent chance there that uh, you know this isn't the case right when they launch. Yes, as it stands, you should be able to trade, buy, and sell Project Nebula NFTs on Craft when they launch, wow. uh, and we've been definitely in touch with them on that and are excited about it. Love it. Okay, so we've covered a lot. I, I just want to step back. Is there anything you feel we've missed in the play to earn? aspect have, have you feel like before the game has launched you've conveyed everything you wanted to to all your fans uh definitely and just know that play to earn is a big deal for us uh we don't want you to have to sell a planet to make money uh we want that to be an option for you uh and a cool option but play to earn is something that uh, is near and dear to our hearts and we will continue to expand uh, how you are able to generate uh, funds uh, in real in the real world real world sorry uh, when you play and that's always going to be a constant source of uh, growth for us and uh, for you it is it is cool yeah that's awesome can't wait I'm excited so uh, we touched on this how how close we're we're pretty much gold we're gold and and on the 27th isn't it that's where we're looking to launch yes. We don't have an exact time for you, but we will definitely. Uh, we have another medium article coming up uh, before launch. It's going to be a uh, kind of a recruits uh, manual for uh, for you to read and kind of get a good understanding of what you should expect and what you should start doing when uh, when we launch. Uh, we'll announce the time uh, on the twenty seventh when that happens, uh, and we'll give it to you in that funky. Eastern European standard time zone uh, so that everybody has to Google what time it actually starts for them. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and, and we'll give you some solid details uh, before before launch as to what to expect and, you know, where to contact us if uh, you see any issues. And uh, just, to, just to say, we're pumped about launch and we know that you guys are too. So uh, when you... When you do come uh, in and start playing, definitely be in our Discord channel. Uh, Telegram is great for us. It's a good place to have a conversation. But from a feedback perspective, uh, you know, you can email me uh, and I will be able to respond and, and, and take, in, take in requests and things. But Discord is great for us to be able to track, uh, track issues, uh, have community responses, uh, get kind of uh, shared opinions and things like that. So I definitely recommend being there when we launch. It's a, it's a solid place to, to have a chat. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I must say, even your Telegram and Discord channels, they're, they're great entertainment, I was about to say. And I actually <laughs> stand by it. You're quite the entertainer in there as well. So uh, I think one of the aspects I didn't touch on now, it's a web base, web browser based game, right? So yes. can we play it on the mobile, on our mobiles? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can play it on mobile through My Icon Wallet. Uh, which I think is pretty common for iconists out there. And uh, originally, you could view it on my icon wallet. You could look at your collection. You could do a couple of uh, you could do a couple of things. But now we're proud to say that you can actually play it from uh, the expiration sense uh, all the way down to upgrading your planets and uh, and things. So 
if you have my icon wallet uh, or if you don't recommend getting it it's a uh, it's an easy install in a in a pretty pretty user friendly app uh, you can play project nebula on mobile other than that it's play.projectnebula.app uh, in your browser uh, and personally you should definitely always view things in your browser at some point. Uh, you know, you get to expand this uh, this art to a to a larger screen, and mm. uh, I think you, you know, your speakers may be better even. Uh, so you uh, you you definitely get like a, a bigger sense of it, of course. But uh, definitely play through mobile. Uh, that's super exciting. And uh, from a browser perspective, Icon X, uh, you know, Hana, we uh, is the new official Icon Wallet. We uh, we will support that. And uh, yeah, there's a there's a few good options for you there. Yeah, that's awesome, exciting. So now, for everyone who's stuck around, and and you are lucky if you have listened to the entire podcast because we've intentionally not talked about what are uh, the promo that the Project Nebula team have been so kind to give Ion Icon a couple of dare I say planets that we are going to be giving away to our audience, our fans. Daniel, can you tell me what your thoughts are around this? How what, what kind of how are we going to give this away to to our listeners? Sure. And uh this is pretty exciting. Uh I'm jealous cuz you know, you're going to somebody out there is going to get a Gen 1 planet before uh before I do and I <laughs> that makes me happy but in a bitter way. <laughs> we're going to give away a we're going to give away a couple of combos. Uh, so fries with the burger here, Gen 1 planet and a rock spaceship. Uh, that way you can start exploring and you'll have some uh, ability to begin generating resources and uh you know, getting a getting a stronger grip on what you can do uh, when you come across things in your uh travels. So uh, we'll give away two uh, combos here, Gen 1 planet and a rock spaceship. Uh, and all we ask that you do is uh, let us know your question or questions if you want to lump them together in a single comment. Uh, I know, Fez, that you're going to put this on YouTube as always. So um, when you're logged into YouTube, just drop a comment below the video uh, and we will respond from our Icon Forge uh, YouTube account to all the questions, and then we'll randomly randomly select a couple people to uh, to win there. And I think uh, the odds in that are pretty good. So definitely take a take a moment to to leave us your question. And fair enough, if you don't have a question and you want to participate, uh, better you don't make a question up. Just just give us a shout out, uh, and we, we'll uh, we'll take the full list of comments and uh, use a random selector tool to uh, to pick a couple people that uh that will lucky be lucky enough to win here love it daniel thank the team and everyone so much this was out of the blue and um i really appreciate that you're just doing this for us um everyone all our fans anyone who's listening what a great way to just get a planet and a spaceship free and all you need to do is ask some questions or give give a shout out that is the simplest way Fantastic. I'm uh, really excited uh, now. I've got to think, have I got any other YouTube profiles? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, play fair on that one, definitely. Uh, yes, definitely. Two, two accounts at max, maybe, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. But yeah, no, look, um, everyone really gets those questions on there. Look, I know I, often people uh, are big fans of the show. Um, we get a lot of that icon information they're off all the builders and the news to everyone um so really this is the opportunity to engage with one of the key builders in our ecosystem and they're building a unique product on the icon blockchain so definitely get your questions in there and, and win something just for asking um thank you so much daniel that that's fantastic i am going to start um well everyone by the time this airs everyone will know but i'll be tweeting about it like crazy <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! I, speaking of tweeting, uh, if I can just end off on a on one note here, uh, go to projectnebula.app. That's our website. We just updated it. Uh, you can check out our roadmap. But on the main page there, uh, you don't even have to scroll down. Um, hit our hit our Medium, Twitter, Discord, Telegram. Uh, hit at least a couple of those up. Follow us on Medium. Get the coolest information at uh, as soon as we publish it out there. Uh, we make the articles fun, definitely, uh, and we make things engaging. We always put some cool imagery in them. Uh, fun fact, you can just right-click the images and download them, make them a screenshot. 
put them as your background. Uh, you can go to our Discord and join a join a really cool community of people. Uh, I love the way people chat uh, in our in our Discord and our and our Telegram. Uh, there's not a there's not a lot of nonsense there. People have a lot of fun, um, and the discussion goes from anything Project Nebula to anything Icon uh, to uh, you know what people are eating uh, in some channels. So mm. you know, <laughs> just uh, just have some fun and definitely hop on our Twitter uh, for sure. We do giveaways on all these. We do giveaways on all these channels. We run raffles. We uh, we sell some stuff, uh, and we get people engaged. So it's a good place to be. Yeah, agree. Look, um, I, I think who who is it? Steve, who made that? Uh, the stickers. Who's been making those Telegram stickers? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I can ICX ICX John. I think is his name on uh, the uh, on the server there. Yeah. Yeah. See, and, and I was just calling that out because, yeah, that's the kind of cool stuff that happens in, in your um, social channels, which is fantastic. Definitely a place to be. And probably if you are wanting to learn the most before the launch, this podcast, but Medium is the source of information. I have to say, before we touch base, um, to make sure I was up to date on everything, that's why I went and... <laughs> read through all the latest articles and i found myself okay now i know where we're at what state are the games in and the questions i want to ask to find out the extra deets so um thank you daniel great call out uh thank you everyone for uh listening staying on till the end that special surprise is the added bonus so uh, let's let's get some great questions across in the um, comment section of the youtube channel that'll be fantastic any closing comments daniel uh, that was it for me. Really appreciate the uh, chance to be on the podcast again, Fez. Uh, it's our pleasure. I, I love having everyone who is building or doing anything in Icon on the podcast. So it's it's our pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Daniel. We'll say goodbye. And um, hopefully the next time I'm, I'm pinging you saying I've acquired the legendary uh, Mythic Planet. <laughs> Two if you find the myth, uh, if you, if you find the Mythic Planet, we'll have to have a follow up uh, follow up call as part of that. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks everyone for listening. Like, subscribe, get your comments in there to win. Thank you, everyone. Take care.